has a very illustrious and long career. He's recently retired in the University of Hawaii, in the, one of the most beautiful universities, um, in, in terms of the scenic location. But um, he has started his career in India um, in linguistics and continued in New York and been lecturing and head of the department of the Asian, South Asian and I think um, Pacific, Indo-Pacific studies for since 1987 or 1985. Yeah. So it's a long, very illustrious academic career. And he was the son of um, Raghunath Sharma, who was Padma Shri. I don't know how many Padma Shri's there have been for uh, this work, but very few have been there. And um, he was a very great scholar of Sanskrit. Um, and um, I'm sure there's a long tradition spawning back to the time of Panini that we perhaps can trace or not. And um, so myself, we conduct an institute in Oracle doing research into Sanskrit. Panini is a relatively new subject because I studied in a Western university in Australia, Australian National University, where we study the systematic grammar, but Panini is kept as a kind of um, afterthought, which I think most under in Germany also when it's taught, it is, we really don't learn the traditional way of reciting the Ashtarajayi. But um, what's beautiful with Professor Ramanath Sharma is he has a traditional education from his father and of course the immersion in India and the academic um, uh, immersion in Hawaii and New York. So it has allowed him to bridge two worlds very beautifully, which is very rare because there are many traditional scholars who cannot communicate Panini. Very few actually. I'd say only one that I have met <laughs> on earth. And it's a great honor to have him in Oroville and in the Tibetan pavilion. Because believe it or not, Tibet has a long grammatical tradition of studying Panini. Um, there has been um, a very great reverence and it was taught to the Dalai Lama and all the previous Dalai Lamas had learned the Akarana as a subject. And they studied it in Tibetan tantras. But, so it's quite apt that we are here. It's, we're also in a forest which I think would please Panini because he used to teach in Takchen um, in a forest. And um, so I just wanted to give a very warm welcome to Professor Raman Sharma and just say we're very deeply honored. Orville was created for research and for development of human consciousness and actually Panini is a doorway to develop your consciousness more than a whatever he is going to um, teach us. It is something that is awakening uh, new neural pathways and it's a wonderful journey. Thank you for coming. So, 
I'm taking you to 1966. A little background. I come from a very traditional uh, family. My grandfather was uh, the first Acharya of the Gurukul Kangri in Haridwar, established by Swami Shraddhananda. Um, at the insistence of Malan Mohan Malviya, he accepted the Acharya ship of Gurukul Kangri. And that's where he was for uh, nearly a decade. And that's where my father studied. My father, uh, he would say that his father was a ten times better scholar than his father, you know, than him. And I told him once that um, what would be ten times better than you, I cannot imagine what would be ten times better than you. Whatever you did, I know. He said, no, 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 this is your affection for your father, which is. And I said, about your affection, you know, like, you are speaking because of your affection for your father. I, um, so, anyway, my father was, he may not have been a uh, hundred times better scholar than my grandfather, but he was really something. His thinking, you throw any text, anything at him, he will come up with his own interpretation. And that's when I got the first mantra of my, uh, or seeds of my uh, scholarship. Never leave anything without questioning it. And arrive at an answer by yourself. To your satisfaction. Unless you are satisfied, you should no satisfactory answer. So I did my master's in linguistics and I was teaching linguistics at the University of Alaba when I got a chance to go under a, a fellowship to do my PhD at the University of Rochester. Long story short, I did my PhD and then I got uh, assistant professorship of linguistics, Sanskrit, anything under the world salvation at the University of Rochester. Why I mention this is how I got into Panini. I had studied Panini, I was traditionally, which I don't consider studying Panini. Real studies began when I went to Rochester, New York. Because that was the time when I wanted to, and I got out of this traditional mold of everything, whatever Guruji says is correct. I can't question that. Panini is what Panini is. Don't mess with him, okay? The problem is that tradition doesn't study Panini. The tradition studies Bhartuji, Dikshit, Siddhan, Kaumudi, and Lodhu Kaumudi. What a pity. So when you get a little more enlightened, I would like to get out of Bhartuji, Dikshit, and the tradition. Go stand at the sidelines and try to figure out what this person known as Panini was. For this, you have to have a dogged determination to get something out of it. Understand it. I, I can come and go and I can lecture. There are so many people who will come and go and lecture. The condition is, I am speaking, I am great or not great, depends on whether I am able to reach it. Whatever I lecture, that thing must make sense to you. If it doesn't make sense to you, it's all useless. We are wasting time. That's what I meant by don't leave it till you understand what it is. 
So my studies began because at that time in linguistics in the United States, Chomsky was the king. And there were all kinds of questions that were being raised about Pani. There was a Dutch guy, very famous, Fritz Stahl, who did a series of papers on Pani. And he kind of threw Panini at the modern linguists. He was also a colleague of Chomsky at MIT. That's how Chomsky got interested in Panini. Panini got Kiparsky. Kiparsky got a guru, S.P. Joshi, and that's how he got interested. He is still working on Panini. Fristal passed on, but the greatest service to Panini and to modern studies of Sanskrit grammarians, the greatest contribution was made by Fristal, who with his articles made us familiarize, hey guys, we come, there's a lot more than what you are doing right now in the transformation of generative grammar. There is a lot more to talk about in mind than you have. This is a surprisingly modern grammar, not a thing as in old. That's how Panini has been taught over here. Indirectly by Siddhant Kaumudi and Raghu Kaumudi, not directly from the horse's mouth, not directly from the Australian. Why can't we go and study the yesterday? So I went there, I was thrown Panini at me by the Chomsky and Transformation Charity Grammar. They who were asking all kinds of enlightening questions. I may not be able to finish this lecture right now, we will take it up in the next one, but I want to really uh, finish what I have started, at least in bits and pieces so that there could be a picture emerging out of it. I will summarize towards the end. So, questions. In grammatical theory, the descriptive linguists have this notion of ideal native speakers. Chomsky debunked this idea of ideal native speaker. I said, no, there is no such thing as ideal native speakers. So he said that there are questions what a well informed speaker, reader can answer that even the native speakers cannot. So there were questions asked about the grammar. Want to hear a nutty sentence that Chomsky threw at us? Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Rang Rahit Hare Vichar Akrosh Bhare So Rahe Hai. This was my translation of Colorless Green Ideas Sleep Furiously. So, if you hear this sentence and then you say, What? This is nonsense. No, this is not nonsense. This is English. Colorless Green Ideas Sleep Furiously is a perfectly grammatical sentence. So the grammatical must be meaningful. Who decides whether it's meaningful or not? If it was not meaningful, well, how do you say it's useless? It must have told you, hey, look, I am just useless. So anyway, and then read it uh, in the reverse. Furiously sleep ideas, green color. Ah, no, there is some problem. <laughs> what kind of problem is that? So I went, I was interested in linguistics, uh, in syntax. I write what Chomsky was doing. But I had to get prepared. I didn't have uh, even elementary mathematics. 
So I was thrown, I was uh, sent in the philosophy department for a year to study symbolic logic to the math department to study set theory. Then my teacher said, now you come and study 